we're going to take Portuguese knitting and use it in a little project for some practice in this dishcloth. This is a regular traditional dishcloth. I've had this pattern available for a while now um, and I'll certainly give you a link to this pattern in the regular knitted way, knitting every row guard or stitch way. But because this is Portuguese knitting, we're going to purl every row because Portuguese purling in the Portuguese knitting style is so easy and that's how garter stitches normally worked. I recently released a video, a basic video on Portuguese knitting and purling and I got a lot of positive feedback and requests for more Portuguese knitting videos. So this is just one of a series of Portuguese knitting videos that I'll be putting out and as I release more I will add them all to a playlist. If you click the little I in the upper right hand corner that will take you to the playlist of all the Portuguese knitting videos that I have out so far. This is the first of the series that I'm putting out um, after the initial basics video and I wanted to do this one because it's an opportunity to um, to practice Portuguese purling in a little project. Also uh, yarn overs and basic decreases so I mean it's, it's a good little project and one of the bits of feedback I got from lots of people after the initial video is that people are using Portuguese knitting uh, in with their regular style of knitting. Like a lot of people said that they're, they're knitting across rows their normal way, like if they're continental or American English knitters, and then they switch to Portuguese knitting for wrong side rows, for purl rows, which is brilliant, that is great. And because the resulting stitches are identical for Portuguese knitting and for continental American English knitting, um, what, I, what I mean when I say that is that there aren't any different twists to the stitch or anything like you would see with combination knitting or with mirror knitting. You can alternate Portuguese knitting and other styles of knitting every other row, every, every, every other stitch if you wanted to. There's, there's no difference, just as long as your tension matches. So this is a good way of practicing. Um, go ahead and click the little I in the upper right hand corner to visit my website where I have a, um, you can download the copy of, uh, a copy of this pattern that I've reworked for Portuguese knitting, so it's purl every row and um, all the decreases are purl side everything else. And this video is brought to us by Knitter's Pride and their straight, their cubic straight needles. And this is the case and this is the needle set here. These are the cuboid needles that are um, I'm flat on each side. And I love this set, this is my own personal set. And the reason that I love them for projects like this is that they're so short. There are 10 inch long needles, just the right size for knitting dishcloths like this. And they're the gorge, gorgeous Platina Nova um, Cubics needles in the carrying case so everything stays neat and tidy. You'll certainly get a close up of these needles as um, we switch and you can get a look at, well, I'm not sure what I'm saying anymore. When you're actually watching me knit with them, you can get a close up look. That's what I'm trying to say. Anyway, many thanks to Knitter's Pride for that. And if you want to get your size uh, seven needles and some cotton or cotton blend worsted weight yarn, um, I'm gonna walk you through all the different rows on this pattern and that's coming up next. We are ready to get started on the dishcloths and I want to mention that the pattern includes instructions for a square dishcloth, which can be a blanket or whatever. You're going to just keep um, keep working the increases until it's as wide as you want it to be. So if you want to make it 20 feet wide or nine inches wide, either is fine. The pattern also includes instructions for a rectangle, which you can also make any size at all, blanket as well. So before we get down to looking at um, the details of the knitting. I want to run through the setup of Portuguese knitting with you, or Portuguese purling. I'm gonna just keep, keep saying Portuguese knitting because it's the Portuguese knitting style, but we're gonna be working the purl stitch. So you want to have the working yarn behind your neck. And the because everything with Portuguese knitting happens with the front of the work, nothing happens with the back. So we want the tension at the front of the work. So um, you'll have, <coughs> there we go, that feels better. You have your work and then in your right hand you want to string the yarn through your fingers so that it looks like you have a yarn ring on the back of your hand around your middle finger. And this is how we keep tension in Portuguese knitting. Um, if you have a knitting pin, a little pin that, can, that hooks on, uh, the, the yarn will go through 
the little pin on your clothes and it's usually just a hook so it can hook and unhook easily. But we're actually going to, uh, I wanted to show you that before we get into this part because I'm going to cast on normally and then put the yarn around the back of my neck. But let's go ahead and start the dishcloth. So I am going to cast on totally normally. I don't know if there is a Portuguese, special Portuguese cast on, but this one, this one works. I'm going to cast on four stitches. And now I'm ready to get myself set up for keeping tension in Portuguese knitting. Put the yarn around the back of my neck with the cast on in my left hand and make myself a yarn ring around my middle finger on my right hand. And the first row, I'm just going to purl four stitches. Whoops. The cast on row is always a little slower, it's a little tight. If you do this for a while, you will have Portuguese knitting absolutely down. So this next row is, it's the first row of the increase pattern, and it's the same row you're going to repeat over and over and over until you get it, until you get the dishcloth or blanket or whatever as wide as you want. So I'm going to purl two. Oops, I split that stitch. There we go. And yarn over. And to yarn over on the purl side in Portuguese knitting, I'm just going to flick the yarn over the top of the needle like that. Don't worry, I'm going to show you that a bunch more times. And then purl to the end. And that I'm going to keep working this same row over and over again. Purl two. This gives us the nice border on the edge. And then to yarn over on the purl side in Portuguese knitting, I'm going to flick the yarn over the needle like that. And purl to, whoops, and purl to, purl to the end. <laughs> okay, let's do it a couple more times. Purl two, yarn over, and purl to the end. And something I think is really dramatic, if you are a right-handed knitter who throws and lets go of the right needle all the time, Portuguese knitting is such a nice alternative, isn't it? Portuguese purling especially. Yarn over and purl to the end. So I'm increasing one stitch every row. Okay. So we're going to pretend that I have increased as much as I want for the whole width of my dishcloth. Obviously this is a tiny dishcloth that's not going to look like anything, but for the sake of demonstration I am going to go ahead and go right into the decrease section. And I will say if you are making a um, a rectangular dishcloth, there's a straight section as well. Just follow the pattern, it's all there. But on the square ones, we go right into the decrease section, which is purl one, and then purl two together, which is really intuitive. Purl one is like this, purl two together is like this, super easy to work. And then yarn over, purl two together again, and then purl to the end. I need to free up some yarn here. Okay, I freed up too much. There we go. Purl two, I mean, purl one, purl two together. Yarn over, purl two together, and purl to the end. And I'll explain, the reason that we decrease twice is because we're still working the yarn over so that the second half of the dishcloth matches the first half. Um, so we're increasing, we need to decrease out that yarn over, and then also decrease for the decrease section.
Okay. Whoops, I need to actually, I missed that. This is Pearl 2 together. My mind has already moved on to the next thing. <laughs> I need to finish this row. So I didn't make much of a dishcloth here, but I did show you all the techniques used, which is all you need. It's a very, very simple dishcloth. Again, uh, click the little I in the upper right-hand corner to go to my website. I have a link to the reworked pattern that has both the square and the rectangular uh, dishcloth instructions for Portuguese knitting. I'll also give you a link to the same pattern for knitting every row for regular, for regular not Portuguese knitting. And also there'll be uh, more information on the awesome Cubix 10 inch straight needle set um, that I use, the 10 inch needles that I used from Knitter's Pride. Great needles, really nice to work with for little projects like this. Anyway, I hope you get a lot of great Portuguese knitting practice and um, watch out for more videos. I have more Portuguese knitting videos on the way.